morning, everyone. This is Brett from Duncan. We're very excited here to be announcing the release of eight fresh, exciting colors to our True Matte Glaze line. Um, and I'm here today to walk you through all the steps and tools needed to create your very own uh, abstract splatter mug using some of those new colors. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here um, is a very important step. So we're just going to damp sponge our wear here. So what this does, it's kind of threefold. So it's removing any kind of unseen oils or dirt or clay dust that may be on the piece. It's also kind of priming the piece to accept your paint a little better. So just one extra little step, but it's definitely an important step. All right, so the first color we're gonna get into is our marshmallow cream. So that's the TM301. So what we're gonna do here is just using our number six um, fan glaze brush. We're just gonna go ahead and apply one pretty generous coat over the whole piece inside and out. So we're just going to start on the inside and now we're just going to do one coat over the whole piece but we're going to continue on the inside with two additional coats. So this is definitely a three uh, if not in some cases four coat uh, glaze line depending on the desired results. We definitely recommend at the minimum three um, but if you're looking for a little bit more opaque coverage a bit more solid coverage kind of recommend maybe doing a heavy a heavy three coat application or maybe just taking a little bit of the extra time and just putting a good fourth coat over it just to be sure. We are going to just wrap up this and then we will get into our further colors. Okay, so we've let our mug dry now with uh, the marshmallow cream. So we've got three coats on the uh, inside of the mug, one on the outside, and that just creates a nice little base for any additional colors on top. So next up is our Dusty Sage. So that's the TM321. So as you can see on the color chart over here, that's a really nice kind of a subtle, um, kind of a succulent, almost uh, light army color. So it's gonna provide a really nice base for our additional colors. So we're gonna go ahead uh, and just on the handle and the mug body itself, apply two really good coats as well as the bottom. So that gets us up to three coat coverage over the entire mug. Then from there, um, all the rest of the colors will be applied on top of a really nice solid base. So here we go. And we're back. We've got our mug here. So completely dried now. We've got three coats over the entire piece, in and out. So now we're gonna get into the really fun stuff, throwing around some paint, having fun, making those happy accidents. Um, so the first color we're gonna use is the TM320. It's the No Way Rosé. So uh, just like most of our underglazes, the True Mats, we do recommend kind of working light to dark. So the No Way Rosé will be um, a little bit lighter than the Peacock color here um, that you can see on the color chart. So that we're going to do Next, so you can see I kind of had some fun drips that went on um, over the No Way Rosé, so I don't want, I want those to be able to stand out over the lighter color. So we're going to start uh, with the lighter color first. And what I like to do is I like to get, in this case I'm just using the three quarter inch um, flat brush here. Um, but the reason why I like this is because it's got, it can really hold a lot of paint because what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of create like a slapping motion. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of water to the, to the um, glaze and I'm gonna kind of just slap and pull. So what we're going for is just that almost kind of an explosion of color, just making a lot of drips. 
a little bit more of an action um, kind of mark. So that's where the water can, can kind of come in um, to help you get that. Uh, anything that you have, like a mop brush or even um, you know an inexpensive chip brush, just something that's going to hold a lot of a lot of glaze that you can really slap onto the piece to create that explosion. So we're just going to jump right into it. So I'm going to kind of wet the brush just a little bit, not adding a huge amount of water, but just enough to kind of, like I said, get those little splats and explosions. So I'm going to kind of aim low because we're going to come in with the peacock on the top. So I'm just going to start here and. Definitely do this in a place that you don't mind getting paint everywhere because it's going to be fun and messy. So let's just get after it. This first one really requires just a bold, go for it kind of move. So I'm just going to do that and hope for the best. See what, see what you get. So you get that. So you can see where it really kind of exploded. You can go over it a couple times. Kind of get a little drips, a little bit of action, and then just simply pull out. After that, kind of leave a rough edge. Kind of just mess around with it. There's really no wrong way to do it. It's just kind of whatever whatever picture you have in your mind. Oh, that was a good one. And you just pull that out. Kind of finish. I don't like when it finishes so clean. So you kind of do the same thing maybe underneath. And pull it to connect it. And you can always just kind of go in and kind of fake it. Add a couple little bits. So yeah, that's something that we're really going for. So just some really cool accidents. And you'll see we've got some good paint drips going already. So that's where that water can kind of come in. Just get a little bit more movement out of the paint. And I'll just kind of blob it in where I want to have a little more action. And so this will be, we're going to do three coats as we did on the base. Um, but What's cool about this approach is that it's three completely different techniques to get those three coats. So this is coat one that we can kind of just call the like wet brush explosion, I guess, technique. Um, so that'll be layer one, or coat one, I should say. And then we're going to do our second coat, which will be, we're going to come in and we're going to pounce that with a sponge. We want to create a whole new texture on top of this one we're creating here. And then our third, I won't ruin the surprise, we'll have to wait to reveal that one. But anyway, I think that's getting to a point that I'm pretty happy with. And you'll see, definitely making a mess, which is kind of the point, kind of half the fun. So I think that's a pretty good start. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to set that aside, let that dry completely, and then we'll just grab our sponge. So. You know, nothing fancy, simple um, potter sponge. And then I usually just like to dampen that. And then you simply just, you know, pounce it into your glaze. Get a good amount. So you might want to, you'll be kind of laying this, you know, it's a fairly common technique, but, you know, you'll maybe be laying it in a little heavier than you might be used to. And then, yeah, you just kind of, Pounce it in there, and then usually just an extension. If you want to kind of extend out areas, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I wish I could have, could have had a little more over here on the handle, and you can simply pounce in a little bit extra. I'll kind of go over it a couple times. Again, getting a good coverage. And so kind of building up, getting in underneath into tight spaces is a little tricky, but you can kind of squish your sponge and kind of Get it in there just to break up the the bold shape of that initial brush stroke. And then you know, kind of just extend out here and there. Being sure to add, getting a little bit of interest everywhere. And of course, this is just our first of what will end up being three um, separate colors on top of the dusty sage ground. So you're going to get lots of opportunities to, you know, really fill the space. So I'm going to leave it as is because I'm kind of liking that. So I think that could be a good stopping point for the second coat. So I'm going to let this dry uh, just a little bit and then we're going to get into um, the third different application of paint for our third and final coat on this color. This, in my opinion, is pretty much 
the most fun of the three techniques simply because it's maybe the messiest. So with this, I like to go back to the water, just kind of wet your, wet your toothbrush, and you want to kind of give it a test. I like to just use my thumb, kind of like this, and what you don't want is what just happened is when you, when you move the bristles, see how that water coming out? So you don't want that. You kind of want to flick any extra moisture off. So you definitely want it moist but not dripping because that's when you can get unintentional drips. So it's kind of controlled, controlled chaos. So with this, I'll just kind of angle the, angle the mug and you can kind of, you know, with that first coat, you kind of got directional splatters. So he's like, oh, I want to maybe continue that. So I'm going to line, line the mug and the toothbrush up so it's going to splatter out and continue that same direction. And then you just simply flick. And so you're kind of just creating an extension of that burst from the first coat. And then same idea once you get into the glaze, kind of I like to maybe get a little bit out of there just to make sure you're not getting big drips. And then yeah, you just simply, and in some cases you might want big splats. So maybe let's do a big one right there and let it just drip and just let, just let things happen. It's half the fun of ceramics in general and especially this project. So I'm just flicking it. Again, you've got those already kind of directional splatters. So I'm just kind of playing that up. And then you'll also, at the same time that you're adding marks, you're going to also come over and spatter your third coat. So you, this is going over that brushed first coat. Uh, see, I got a couple of big drips here. So maybe not ideal, but I'm going to run with it. Just let it drip out. So you've got your brushed first coat and then your pounced second. And now we're doing uh, the toothbrush third coat. And the cool thing about that is if you do get an unintentional drip, just come back in and splatter where it started. And that'll hide it pretty well. It'll make it look like you meant to do it. So I'll kind of do that to these that I got going over here. And now this might not look like much now because it kind of looks uniform, right? Like there's just one solid chunk of color. Um, but when this gets out of the kiln, this is when you're going to really see and start to appreciate all of the subtle variations in color and just the layering. You really start to pick it up pretty nicely where it doesn't look, doesn't look like much when you're doing it. But just get that cool payoff at the end when you pop, when you pop that kiln open. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in a little bit more. Definitely getting a few more heavy drips and drops than I like, but that's all right. You can always just with this too, if you don't really like it, just come back with your sponge and just kind of pounce it out a little bit. I didn't. I didn't care for those two drips, so you can always just edit it a little bit as you go. But yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that for our first um, for our first color. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside, let this dry completely, aim a little bit higher um, with our peacock. So that's our next color, the uh, TM323. So we're going to pretty much repeat the same step. So we're going to kind of cut the glaze just a little with some water just to create those um, explosions that we want. So now I'm going to kind of hold this thing and say, hmm, where, where might be an empty spot? Where could use a little bit of, of action? So I see one spot right here. And then just, again, just go for it. Don't be scared. So I'm going to go right there. Just hit it a couple times and then pull it out. And just let it drip. Let it do what it wants. So we're back. We've got our mug about halfway dry on that first coat. So now we're going to go repeat the process that we've already gone through. So we can kind of run through that quick. Now 
we're going to go ahead and finish off this color with our toothbrush. So again, I've added that um, kind of shop cloth in there just to prevent any of the unnecessary spatters getting on, in onto the inside of the mug. And again, just checking, kind of checking the viscosity of it, making sure it's not too thin. I did add just a little bit of water, but what you really want is it just to kind of splat and fly right off the brush, get some really good directional kind of splatter going on. Go ahead and dive right into our last color here. So again, just kind of wetting that toothbrush just a little, maybe a little bit less than with some of the other colors. We're going to again kind of go through and identify areas where, you know, like maybe right in here where there's not a whole lot of activity going on. So let's just add some. So again, kind of checking over here, making sure those not going to drip too severe when you actually get it over your piece. And then it's just simply adding in a little bit here and there where you want it, where you're kind of filling in a little bit of empty spots. And then also, yeah, feel free to you know, drop in big drops, kind of like I'm doing there, just by snapping that toothbrush down, kind of letting it drip and drop a little bit. And you can always kind of make those dots look more like a spatter by going in and adding a little bit letting it drip a little bit if you'd like. I'm just going to kind of give this a quick rinse over. And with that, we've wrapped up our mug here. So we've got our last color splattered on there. So now all we got to do is just uh, let that dry overnight. We're gonna stilt it in our kiln, we'll fire it up to 06. Uh, and then once that guy's cool, we're gonna go ahead and pop it open and uh, share the results with you. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys had fun and enjoyed our new colors in the True Matte Glaze line. Thank you. <laughs>